Good morning and welcome to church on this fourth Sunday of Advent. I'd like to welcome you all to our online Zoom service today, and I'd like to draw your attention to some of our mission and mission, mission and ministry opportunities. As you are aware, we have our virtual worship service every Sunday, starting at 1015 for some fellowship, and then our service begins at 1030. So we love to have you here and we love to see you. So welcome. And then I'd also like to make a special attention or announcement to our Christmas Eve worship service. And that's going to be this Thursday, December 24th at 6 p.m. And then it will start at 5.45 p.m. for some fellowship with each other. And there will be Holy Communion during this service, so make sure you have your juice and a piece of cracker or bread. And there will be a special Christmas offering, and it will go to uh, Hope House and Winter Nights, which is the homeless ministry of the Interfaith Coalition. There won't be an actual offering time during the service, but you can mail your offerings uh, to the church office. And then if you haven't already, as you can see on this slide, we have an, a fantastic little goodie bag for you. So if you haven't already, make sure to email me or text me or call me or what have you and get your name on the list. Oopsie. And they will be delivered to you uh, this week by myself, Liv, or Pastor. <laughs> so make sure you get your names down for those. They're, um, they're for all ages, and, uh, and we really hope you can join us on Christmas Eve. And then uh, Dennis zoomed through the slides because I jumped ahead, so sorry, Dennis. Uh, but we do have upper room available in the church office. Pastor continues her four-week Advent study by Adam Hamilton, and we also have a variety of meetings coming up. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> Welcome to service, everyone. said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Today we remember Mary, innocent and powerful, sacred and scared, worried and waiting as the Savior of all grows in her womb. She sings boldly when she might be meek. She bears her role in history with the confidence of a warrior. She is the beginning of a mighty revolution as the proud are brought down and the lowly lifted up. Today we give thanks for the Marys among us who step out of the role society has planned. Unintended pioneers determined to do as God asks, fearless and fearfully stepping out in faith and beckoning us to do the same. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light this candle as a symbol of Mary, God's blessed one, bearer of the way.
please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, all good gifts come from you, dear Lord, and from these riches we bring you this offering. Help us to be generous givers, dear Lord, both of our money and our lives, that we might make a difference in this town and the world. Help us to use our gifts for the furtherance of your purpose in this place and for the benefit of those in need. We ask this through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave all that he was, that we might know life in all its fullness. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, let's share our joys and concerns. Julius, please take away. Sure. Thank you, Pastor. This is a time for our joys and concerns. So as we've done in the past, if you just grab my attention, I'll call on you and you can unmute your mic. Go ahead, Bob. My, my daughter-in-law has recovered. She's doing much better. Oh, wonderful. That's great. And what was her name, Bob? Liz or Elizabeth? Elizabeth. Great. Prayers for full recovery for Liz. Yeah, go ahead, Katie and John. I have a major joy each Sunday and in between for the wonderful work performance of the Zoom with you Julius, and especially with Dennis and setting up all of this. It is so remarkable, and it uh, really, really brings joy to my heart. So thank you so much. Oh, it's our, it's our blessing to, to work and bring you this, for sure. Thank you for that. Any other joys and concerns? I have one. I'm, I'm just going to say one now that I'm, my mic is open. Can I just say how fantastic it is to have Kevin and Lynn do these Christmas services? I mean, just unbelievable. I mean, like, you know, I, I was just sitting here listening to the music and just, um, it's very, very, very special. And I appreciate them very much. Any other joys and concerns? Hi, go ahead, uh, the Waltons. Hi. Uh, I would like prayers for a neighbor. Her name is Marla, and Marla. she was just diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. And where does Marla live? Uh, Discovery Bay. Uh, Discovery Bay, because she's local. Okay. All right. Certainly prayers for Marla for a full recovery of breast cancer. Thank you. Yeah. Any uh, other joys and concerns? Robin Vaughn, yes. Hi, Robin. Go ahead. Prayers, prayers for two of my, <coughs> excuse me, two of my old neighbors on Pomona. <coughs> excuse me. Um, Colleen Ferkins' husband, Don Ferkins, and um, Monty Dumas. They're both kind of struggling for their life, and they need all the prayers that they can get. So, um, and I want to echo on what John said. The Zoom meetings are just. They're just so wonderful, especially for me since I'm not there. So thank you so much for including me in this. I appreciate it. Oh, no, no problem. So prayers for Monty and Don. And where are they located, uh, Robin? They're on Pomona in um, where I used to live on Pomona Drive. They're right oh, in Pomona number Drive. Four. Yeah. Okay. And they're both actually they're both neighbors. 
and uh, they need all the prayers that they can get. Sure, sure. Especially this time of year, it's it can be tough on people. Yeah, Larry, go ahead. Uh, as we get closer to Christmas, uh, we know how heavy people's hearts get. And I just uh, like to say that uh, we hold those that uh, uh, lost somebody uh, today, or we hope we hold uh, in our hearts those who uh, had an anniversary with somebody today and have uh, since lost them. Uh, these people certainly need uh, our prayers at this time. For sure. Thank you, Larry. I will say, I will add one more thing. This is a special time for the Hope House crew. So Jerry and team that do a great job all year. This is um, just a special time of year when folks need that service and just prayers and support for the for the folks and teams that are working overtime to to support local families at the Hope House. It's, I'm sure they definitely appreciate it this time of year. Thank you, Jerry and team. Any other joys against? Hey, Martin, go ahead, Martin. You got to unmute there, big guy. I'll mute your mic there, Martin. Quiet. As I mentioned earlier, our 40 year old grandson of San Jose, Jeremy, uh, got the um, virus. And, uh, but he is at this point seeming to recover well. And his wife and kids have tested negative. Mm -hmm. but, but we still are not sure how Jeremy's doing. <laughs> Jeremy, okay. Prayers for Jeremy and his family during this Christmas season. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, Marge, go ahead. Um, after being off work for about six months on disability, my son returned to work on Wednesday and had a wonderful day. On Thursday, he woke up with a sore throat and a stuffy nose. He is quarantined now until the 28th of December, and he has had his COVID test and a strep throat test. Mm -hmm. he uh, we don't know it, it, what, if he has it. It's very mild, but that was some turn of events after one back, day back at work. Yeah, yeah it's strange. So, so what, March, what is, uh, what's your son's name? Just... Gregory. Gregory. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Certainly prayers for Gregory and your family, for sure, supporting him. Any other joys and concerns? If you, uh, during the service, if you think of one, feel free to send us a, uh, a chat um, text and uh, we'll incorporate it um, after the service. All right, I think, uh, Pastor, it is back to you. <laughs> I'm not Pastor, honest. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to share some joys with everyone. Uh, first off, um, I'm sure many of you follow me on Facebook, but it was a joy that uh, Jamie had a rather short surgery and he is doing incredibly well um, and hopefully this third time's the charm. So uh, thank you for your prayers for him and um, another joy, James gets to come home for Christmas, so yay. And then the surprise joy that I didn't mention in the announcements is should you come to that Christmas Eve service, which I highly recommend, there's going to be a special Christmas pageant put on by various uh, families in the congregation that they'll be creating videos and sending in to Dennis. So, you don't want to miss that. Thank you. Please uh, continue to pray for uh, Roddick family who has been, um, uh, Jeanette and Robert have been tested uh, positive uh, and the whole family is going through this journey. And um, Please remember Keith Hicks. He is our church custodian. He's going to have a shoulder surgery tomorrow. So he's going to be out of the work uh, five or six weeks. So please remember him in your prayers. And also please pray for Audrey Dawn. Uh, she's going through a really hard time and the parents uh, want us all to pray for Audrey. So remember uh, Audrey in your prayers. And uh, Dave Funk, he's doing um, 
really strong, uh, but he is getting uh, some challenges, real, real challenges. So please remember Dave Funk. Uh, he's uh, beginning his fourth week of chemo and radiation. I think uh, for two weeks for the holiday, he's uh, not going uh, to uh, for the radiation on Friday. So it's uh, just four days a week, um, these two weeks. Okay, so let us let us be in a in attitude of prayers, and we will begin our prayers by lifting up uh, all the names um, in silence. Let's take a deep breath, breathe in, breath of God, breathe out, Emmanuel, God be with us. Breathe in, breath of God. Breathe out, Emmanuel. Breathe in, breath of God. Breathe out, God with us. I invite you to pray for all these people. It's going to be uh, continuing in the next slide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for the healing and strength for the sick. For strength and healing, uh, for the sick and our homebound sisters and brothers. We also lift up uh, Bob Clark's daughter-in-law who is in uh, recovery. We lift up Martin Tucker's grandson, Jeremy, recovering from uh, COVID, and also praying for Marge's son, Gregory. We lift up uh, Linda Walton's neighbor for her journey with cancer. We also lift up two neighbors of um, Robin Vaughn for the healing. We also lift up all those who are still grieving because of their loved ones whom they lost. Let us continue to pray for the safety and strength for all the medical workers. Let us pray for the safety and strength for all the firefighters, police officers, soldiers and school workers and teachers and our Hope House volunteers. O oh God, Emmanuel, come to us, abide with us. You came to us long ago as a helpless baby as one in need of human love and care. You taught us how to love and care for one another. Help us to hold on to childlike wonder, amazement, and love, and help us to love one another all year long. 
guide our feet into the way of peace as only the Prince of Peace can lead us by laying down our lives for one another and serving one another. In the name of Christ Emmanuel, God with us. We pray and we continue to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. 
but she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord for this Sunday. Thanks be to God. So the angel, Gabriel, came to Mary and said, The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. So Mary was the blessed one. But I'm not sure if Mary felt that she was blessed. You know why. She would be pregnant before her marital relationship, and that could have resulted in public humiliation at the time and also death penalty according to the law. I can imagine that as she walked walked among the small-minded people of Nazareth, with her unwed expectancy visible for all to see. She probably did not feel blessed. Furthermore, traveling many miles on a donkey in the last month of her pregnancy and delivering a child in much less than ideal circumstances must have given her a moment when she questioned God's God's blessing. When the King Herod ordered to kill newborn Jewish children under two years of age, and when it made it necessary for Joseph, Mary, and the infant to flee into Egypt, I am so sure that did not seem like blessing. So today, Mary reminds us that God's blessing does not always mean that we can get everything we want under the Christmas tree. This year, life has been really difficult and challenging to all of us. Life was really difficult and challenging to Mary at the time. So many ways, Mary represents a lot of us these days to whom life has been unkind and harsh because of the pandemic and so many other things going on in the world. However, as God 
never abandoned Mary. He has never left us alone. As God had done remarkable things with Mary, God still does amazing things with you and me, through you and me. Mary's life journey proves, proves that circumstances do not dictate the blessedness of the person, but the relationship with God does. We are so blessed to have this glorious example of Mary, the servant of the Lord, saying yes without measuring the cost. Mary demonstrates the power that can be unleashed when a person will simply say yes to God and then proceed to live a life dedicated to binding up the broken and encouraging the afflicted and the poor. This precious value is revealed in the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, a powerful song that is an uncompromising celebration of the ability of God to transform the world, correcting injustice and bringing hope to the powerless. The California Solidad uh, State Prison houses the state's largest concentration of men sentenced to life behind bars. Who would call them blessed? But this year, they proved that circumstances do not dictate the blessedness of the people. Uh, there is a campus minister of Palma High School uh, in Salinas, and this school is run by uh, Christian Brothers Institute of California, and his name is uh, Jim Michelet. He runs a reading program uh, in this prison, and he, he involves his students uh, with the inmates uh, in group discussions. So as they discussed so many times, so many days, on the matter of doing the right things with their lives, they were really motiva motivated to do something good for the community since uh, Jim came from this high school, they were asking him if there were any student who were in need of help. Uh, when Jim heard them saying it, uh, one name uh, came up in his mind. And he is a third year student at his high school, his name is Cy Green, and his parents enrolled him in this prestige school, very expensive school, because they wanted him to get out of the life around that community, which was, has been heavily damaged with drugs and gang uh, violence. Basai's dad uh, had heart surgery and lost the job and they could not pay the tuition anymore. Monthly, it was uh, $1,200. But then this amazing thing happened. Those inmates 
of the book club, they raised more than $30,000 from inside the prison and helped them, helped him, Sai, to graduate this year and attend college uh, at the Academy of Art Institute, I mean, uh, University in San Francisco. Let's think about how they raise the money. The minimum wage in prison is eight cents an hour. So it takes a full day of hard labor to make a dollar inside prison. One inmate, Reggie, donated his entire monthly paycheck of $100 to this cause. He said, I get paid to do what I do, so why not pay it forward and give it to someone else for a change? Sai and his parents received this incredible gift from perfect strangers at their desperate moment. The dad said, it brought me to tears. It was truly a blessing. It was unheard of. They started making visits to the prison in addition to taking part in Palma reading group, he and his family embraced building relationships with many of the brothers in blue. This story was shared through CNN and so many other media, uh, news medias in uh, November this year. Circumstances do not dictate the blessedness of people, but their relationship with the Holy One really makes difference. Life has been so hard to so many people so many of us have lost our loved ones or jobs, struggling with financial crisis, struggling with loneliness. So we are going to uh, share our blessings with uh, people in need uh, this Christmas season. Our special Christmas offering We'll go to Hope House and also go to Winter Nights uh, so that we can help the homeless neighbors uh, in our county. My husband's church, uh, they lost 20 members so far this year alone. Almost two funerals a month they had to hold. Does this mean that they are not the blessed ones? No. This means that God is still working with them and through them to comfort his grieving children. Those children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren uh, of the dead, they have come to Zoom funeral service and have witnessed how much their parents have been loved and cared for. And some of them, amazingly, have come back to church. And many of them have started thinking about the importance of faith and faith community. The message 
of our gospel lesson is simply that God continues to bring encouragement to those who feel powerless and without hope. The Spirit of God continues to come, offending our reasons, challenging false pieties, and confusing the clever. We should not be fooled by the book cover. Anyone, anyone can be a blessed one with their restoration of their relationship with God. The great challenge is, can we see it, those blessed ones? Every day, God is lifting up the lowly and the humble. Mary's prediction was accurate. God is mindful of the humble state of his servant. May it be our prayers that the spirit of Mary, God's blessed in instrument for bringing Jesus into our world, may inspire within us a desire to reach out in acts of love and kindness to help build God's kingdom in those special places where we live and have influence on others. Blessed are you among people. Amen. Let us pray. Let us have a silent prayer for a minute. Oh God, we are the blessed ones because you are Emmanuel, you are with us. Thank you for the gift of light, gift of love. In your name we pray, amen. Let us sing, what child is this? to 19.
Let us go from here in confidence, in joy and peace, knowing that the love of God the Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the presence and the uplifting power of the Holy Spirit goes with you now and forever. Amen. Let's uh, pass the peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. You.